Bob, that dreams are an altered state of consciousness is obvious. We all know the bizarre nature of it and the potential benefits that they are, but, but why do they occur? How do they occur? For what reason did evolution select for it? The question of why we dream is one that we're only at the very, very beginning of being able to answer. And it has two parts. There's the why in terms of why does the brain doing what it's doing cause dreaming? And there's the question why, what function can that dreaming actually serve? So, so let's do those one at a time. It looks like the simple answer to why we dream is that there are regions of the brain that when they are fully activated, we have conscious awareness of. And we'd have to go into the whole question of why are we conscious when we're awake to answer that question. But we know that there are brain regions that seem to feed into consciousness so that what hits our visual cortical areas, we are consciously aware of. Whereas what hits just the retina, if it gets no further than the retina, we're not consciously aware. So there's brain regions we know that when they're activated, the content of the information they're processing is available to our conscious awareness. So the simple answer is that when we're sleeping, our brain is processing information in many ways similar to when we're awake. And when they use those cortical regions that we have conscious access to, we get, if you will, the, 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 the gift of being allowed to observe what those regions are doing. That would argue that dreaming is what we call an epiphenomena, that it's something that's occurring not for its own sake, but as a result of something else that's the fundamental thing going on. So it has been suggested that the reason we are conscious of our dreams is because evolution forgot to turn it off <laughs> when we went to sleep. So the second question becomes, is there a function to the dreams per se? And this is a question that I don't think we really fully understand how to address. Because what you want to do is you want to say, okay, what if someone dreams without their brain doing those things? Does the dreaming do anything? But we know that the dreaming is part and parcel with that brain activity. It's sort of like saying, well, you know, if you boiled some water and it wasn't hot, would it burn you, <laughs> right? But you can't boil water unless it gets hot. And, and so those things become inseparable. And so it might be, you know, it might be in a way that we're still struggling with the mind-body problem and we're trying to tease apart two things that can't be. So I guess the question is whether the conscious phenomenon of experiencing the dream causes any changes in the brain that will lead to changes in how we think or remember or act in the future. And I've talked to lots of people who have said that there's no way that we can imagine that pure thought, pure mental experience could affect the brain. And that doesn't bother me because we don't know of any way that brain activity can cause the mental phenomenon in the first place. So if we have no idea how A causes B, I'm not worried particularly that we don't understand how B might be affecting A. It may be an epiphenomenon. I can't say it isn't. But I can, I can tell you that we have as much scientific reason to believe that the dreaming is actually having an impact on the brain as we have scientific reason to believe that even consciousness exists. We have no scientific evidence that consciousness exists. Every study that looks at consciousness starts with the assumption that we're conscious. And looks for correlations. And, and looks for correlations. And, but then we're back in the same sure. place. Sure. So I can tell you, I can tell you that we have done studies of sleep's impact on memory where we train people to navigate on their computer through a, a maze. And then we test them three hours later. And if we let subjects take a nap for an hour and a half during that period, they will actually perform better mm -hmm. on the maze than if we keep them awake, let them watch a couple of episodes of Friends. 
And we thought, okay, so there it is, you know, it's the sleep that's doing it. It's the biological state of sleep. Dreaming is not relevant. Really. Well, we except that know. my student there in Walmsley woke them up and asked them what they were dreaming about. And it turns out that it was only the subjects who at some point during that nap, when being awakened and asked, reported a dream about the maze, those are the only ones who showed improvement. So, so does that tell us that the dreaming is important? Well, it tells us that whatever processes are involved in enhancing that memory, we see those in our dreams. And so we're back at that same place. It might be an epiphenomenon, but here's a strange thing to say. It becomes clear that we need that epiphenomenon to occur or we're not going to see That's almost self-refuting. <laughs> it's a question of how you tease apart those few words, because you can't get the, it seems like if the brain's going to do that, then you have to dream. And whether that's just because whenever that happens, you dream, or because, in fact, the dream is somehow actually affecting the brain. How about from an evolutionary psychology point of view, why did dreaming be selected for? Is it just for the memory or is it for some other kinds of things? Well, it could be related to memory. It could be related to emotional processing. There's a slim possibility that over time it was maintained because of its social value. I mean, we do talk to other people about our dreams. It is a mode of social interaction. Frankly, I have to tell you, I find it unpleasant if I go to a party and tell someone I meet that I study dreams. The next phrase out of their mind, out of their mouth, without exception, is, oh, I had the most amazing dream. So, so there is this social drive now to, to share these dreams. And whether that's, that's of evolutionary value, if, if it is, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, but I don't know that we have an evolutionary value unless it turns out that that dreaming is either a necessary byproduct of something that was selected for, the kind of memory processing that we've been talking about, or if those dreams are not epiphenomenon and just critical for producing those sorts of changes in the brain that lead to a better understanding of what we learned the day before. Which makes us more robust and, and more fit for survival. Better able to survive and even happier. <laughs>